And I'm really delighted uh, to welcome you to the, um, to the seventh annual edition of the Chinese City Conference. It's uh, actually this year taking place in this uh, legendary place for entrepreneurs and for tech innovators, Tsinghua Science Park. And I would like to take uh, this opportunity to thank for their support and for their loyalty the officials from the Chinese government, um, from uh, the Beijing municipality, from uh, the US government and from the EU Commission. I would like also to thank our partners and I would like also to thank our advisors who made this conference possible for the past few years. I would like also, obviously, to thank you all for coming every year and attending China City. Um, thanks to your support and thanks to your loyalty, China City remains the number one conference on China Tech innovation and entrepreneurship. More importantly, uh, the world is now catching up with China City funding vision that considers China a new kind of Silicon Valley, both as a, a hotbed for creating tech innovation of global impact and also as a magnet attracting uh, entrepreneurs, top tier entrepreneurs from all over the world. Um, as a matter of fact, this year, the international media coverage of the Chinese Tea Conference has never been so strong. Um, and as I speak, the whole Chinese Tea Conference is a live stream uh, over the internet through Sina and also uh, uh, through uh, NetEase in China and through different other Western partners uh, around the globe. Why so much attention now? Because uh, this phenomenon of what I call Chinization of global tech entrepreneurship is drastically gaining momentum. And the Chihu record IPO, or Baidu, who's now the third largest internet market cap uh, right after uh, Google and Amazon, are just the tip of the iceberg of this silent yet very real tech revolution which is taking place right now in China. At China City, jointly with our partners, we all share the same vision, the vision that many of tomorrow's global tech companies are going to be originated in China and actually are in the process of being originated in China. The era of the so-called copycat companies from the West, if there ever was one, is definitely over and China is right on the track of becoming the leading superpower in tech innovation and entrepreneurship. Of course, this silent tech revolution uh, is creating unlimited opportunities. Um, I'm confident that today and tomorrow, you at China City will be able to grab some of these unlimited opportunities. So I thank you all again for attending China City, whether you're on site or online. And I wish you all a fantastic conference. Thank you. I would like to introduce uh, the next uh, speaker, uh, who's um, the vice, the assistant uh, vice president of the uh, Tsinghua uh, Science Park, Mr. Jeremy Shui. Good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, welcome to China ICT conference, and welcome to the uh, Tsinghua Science Park. Uh, on behalf of the uh, Tsinghua Science Park and the uh, uh, Tsinghua Entrepreneur and Executive Club, uh, I wish uh, all of you will have uh, will enjoy this wonderful event. And uh, China ICT is an event for you to identify the. Uh, the star, uh, tech star in China, and myself and my colleague here in Tsinghua Science Park uh, is conducting the uh, same mission here for many over uh, over 15 years, approaching to 20 years. Uh, Tsinghua Science Park, actually we are in center of the uh, Zhongguanzun High Tech Zone, which is the uh, heart of heart of China's hotbed of innovation and entrepreneurship. And share some uh, data with you is uh, say in Tsinghua Science Park we have over uh, um, 
every day, in and out, we have over uh, 400 companies, from very big one to very small one. The small firm can be start from the one people with one computer in an incubator. The big one can be a larger comp large company like Google. So we really, uh, uh, by uh, over 10 years uh, uh, effort, we really uh, uh, establish a good uh, uh, ecosystem for innovation and uh, entrepreneurship. And surrounding Tsinghua Science Park is even a more amazing situation. You not only will see the uh, Tsinghua University, Peking University, and also the uh, Academy of Science, of uh, China Academy of Science, and also uh, over thousands of the uh, uh, research institute and over thousands of the uh, uh, high-tech firms. And, but also you will see uh, another, say, around the, about 50 different universities. And every year you will see about uh, 400,000 new graduates from this area. 50% of them about the, they are carry the engineering degree. So if you really try to find out who is a tech star in China in the future, this is the right place to go. And another uh, several words about the, uh, uh, our uh, team, which is uh, one of the supporter of this event called the Tsinghua Entrepreneur Executive Club. We have about uh, 200 uh, by invitation only members, uh, all Tsinghua alumni, uh, start this, uh, uh, to, to uh, uh, join this club, which is uh, an all senior uh, uh, tech company's uh, founders. And uh, we have uh, over a uh, trillion dollars market cap and uh, also manage about the, uh, over several billion dollars via fund. So we really can, can be proud to say uh, we are stars to start in, in China's this, uh, uh, tech star market. So, um, uh, and uh, tomorrow afternoon, if you want to learn more information about this, I'll be back uh, here for another 15 minutes interview. So, uh, again, so uh, congratulations for this uh, China ICT event and uh, Tsinghua Science Park and uh, Tsinghua Entrepreneur Youth Club is proud to support this event. Thank you. Have a good day. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you very much, Romy. Um, I would like now uh, to welcome uh, Dr. Deng Yuan, who's a principal at uh, the China uh, Electronic uh, Commerce Association. Gentlemen, 科技创业者和企业家的峰会今天我们很高兴地看到来自欧盟、美国使馆、北捷市政府和清华企业家俱乐部的有关领导各企业的代表、投资机构的代表们参加了这次会议高科技创新创业者尤其是电子商务创业企
So actually I'm pretty happy because of this time I was almost able to understand more words by just Chinese. So it was good. So now this is my pleasure uh, to welcome Frank Greco, who's uh, the uh, EU uh, first counselor for information society and media here in China and Greater China and Mongolia. Right. Frank, nice to see you. <clears throat> So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, good morning. It is a pleasure for me to be here on behalf of the European Union uh, to take part in this event, as in ICT, together with the entrepreneurs uh, from Chinese and Western internet companies, essentially, or the, the internet ecosystem. I would like to certainly organize, uh, to, to welcome, uh, to congratulate the organizers for the hard work in setting up this event, both uh, both uh, physically and in the cyberspace, and and also for the for the nice premises which uh, we are happy to discover for the first time. I lead the information society and media section, as as Frank has said, in the European Union delegation here in Beijing. Essentially, my responsibilities are on behalf of the European Union to establish cooperation and good relationship with Chinese entities involved in this particular area, uh, on, notably with uh, public authorities, with the Chinese uh, central government, that includes the Ministry of Industry, the Ministry of Science and Technology, and uh, SAFT, the broadcasting uh, organization, but also business and academia, of course. Our aim is to build a solid basis for long-term EU-China relations in the ICT field. And in this context, we handle a wide range of issues and uh, various uh, headings, including collaboration in research, issues relating to regulation, both in Europe and in China, market barrier issues, which uh, do exist and uh, which we we are in intensive discussions with our Chinese partners and also policy exchanges. We, we discuss how to move this industry forward. Um, the European Union as a whole, the EU Commission, which is the executive body of the European Union, is fully aware of how important ICTs are to society. ICTs uh, touching areas such as IT, telecom, audiovisual, that's broadcasting and content, internet governance, e-government, and e-commerce. It is an, an economic sector important in its own right. Uh, something like 8% of the EU economy is, uh, is uh, connected to the ICT sector. Um, but even more importantly, it has been estimated that uh, of the order of 50%, so half of the productivity gains of uh, the, uh, in the economy in Europe over the last few years have come directly or indirectly via ICT. Uh, it is also a key source of innovation, as we all know, underpinning other thriving, thriving industries such as the biotech sector. We also have uh, in the European Union a strong focus on the societal aspects of ICT. We, we make sure and support the use of ICT to improve, for instance, healthcare, educational systems and uh, government services. We therefore in the European Union develop policy and regulation for the whole of Europe, for the single market of Europe, but also we fund a significant amount of research and development. In fact, we, we fund one of the biggest uh, programs in uh, ICT in the world. Um, it's of the order of one and a half billion, Euro, billion dollars uh, a year. Interesting to note that it's only half uh, what uh, um, an internet company which, which did not exist 10 years ago funds uh, research in this area. Now, this is not a bad thing from my point of view, I have to say. Uh, public funding is there to support private enterprise. If ultimately private enterprise could take over completely, all the, the better. 
But for the time being, there is a need for, for public support uh, for much development and much uh, uh, work in, in this area, as in many other research and development areas. So, um, I want to touch briefly on China. We know that China is a, is a great uh, success story for ICT, for internet in particular. The figures uh, we all hear are staggering. Um, for instance, the fact that there are already more than 300 million mobile netizens here in China. 70 million were added just last year. Yeah, these are figures which are not replicated and impossible anywhere else in the world, I think. The, bo the boom in e-commerce is also quite remarkable, I have to say, in China. It is um, considered by some analysts to be potentially the fastest growing economic sector in China over the next four or five years. Um, potentially it will quadruple its turnover uh, the turnover of e-commerce in China will quadruple to over 300 billion US dollars by 2014, 2015. This is a huge, huge development, I believe. So, we, and we are not the only ones, are fascinated by the developments which are taking place uh, in the internet in China, and in particular in the fact that uh, Chinese internet businesses have been able to emerged so quickly and so strongly over the last few years. Of course, we're aware that uh, China has particular local conditions which cannot be necessarily replicated in, in other countries, but nevertheless, we certainly believe that there are some useful lessons that we as policy developers can draw from the China experience, how they were able to develop their own local champions, so to speak. And this is interesting for Europe, because Europe has not been one of the winners, uh, let's be honest, uh, over the last few years in this sector. So, I think, um, finally, to conclude, uh, the development of the internet in China is definitely going to have a, a major impact worldwide. Uh, this is the reason I come here, to get to know better this sector and uh, to get to know also how collaboration collaborations between East and West are uh, emerging and are developing. I'm f looking forward therefore to learn more about this subject over the next couple of days. Finally, on a more personal note, I'd like to, to say that I, I have known the CN, 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 CNICT's organizer, Mr. Nazikian Frank, uh, for some time. And I, I appreciate his enthusiasm and, uh, and also his, uh, his sense of entrepreneurship and also his knowledge about China. Um, I also like his name. Uh, we have the same name. Um, I do wish that Europe had uh, more entrepreneurs like uh, Frank in this area. So let me conclude, therefore, by wishing CNICT all of you and no doubt Frank, a good conference and uh, some good discussions in the days to come. Thank you. Thank you very much, Frank. Um, I'd like to welcome now uh, Rosemary Dennant, who's the principal uh, commercial officer at the US Embassy of China. Hi, Rosemary. Nice to see you. Excuse me. Thank you and good morning. Uh, it's an honor to be here at the opening of the China ICT. And uh, as uh, Frank said, I uh, represent the commercial section of the U.S. Embassy responsible for the development of uh, business uh, relations between China and the United States. And as you can imagine, it's a very busy place. Uh, it's very, very, uh, on the personal side, uh, as my predecessor just, just mentioned some personal notes, I first came to China in 1982 as a student and studied in, at uh, Beida, uh, just uh, quite near here, uh, and it's uh, incredible. We never could have thought that 30 years later there would be uh, the range of cooperation, development, and technologies um, that nobody could have anticipated. 
And it's through the entrepreneurship of, of many people here and online uh, that, that such has taken place. Uh, the U.S.-China uh, trade relationship is a big part of that. Uh, last year, as China emerged as the second largest economy in the world, it also became our uh, largest overseas export market with $91 billion in exports. We uh, do have a significant uh, trade imbalance, but hopefully bringing more of our companies and entrepreneurs, investors, uh, buyers and sellers together in forums such as this, uh, we can uh, develop a, a more balanced trade situation. I think our overall uh, relationship, uh, commercial relationship, is very robust and, and getting better. Uh, when uh, President Hu visited uh, the United States in January, uh, he signed more than $45 billion in, export in U.S. export agreements and uh, starting to develop a very strong investment relationship uh, with $3.5 billion uh, in uh, investment uh, deals arranged. We also have a high-level dialogue on to foster innovation between the White House Science Advisor and the Ministry of Science and Technology here in China uh, that uh, started last fall and continued in May, uh, just earlier this month. Uh, and as everyone here knows, knows far better than I do, the importance of a solid, uh, innovative uh, framework for developing the ICT industry. Finally, I just want to point out that the U.S. Uh, very much welcomes the uh, Chinese investment into the United States. Um, official investment figures are, uh, uh, as of 2009, were $2.3 billion of uh, Chinese investment, but a more recent study actually indicated it's close to $12 billion. And uh, a recent World Bank study indicated that 31 of 33 uh, sectors studied are totally uh, open to foreign investment in the United States. So as we work together to create a more even uh, playing field in, in trade, the, uh, the internet and the ICT area plays a, a critical role uh, in, in, uh, in having the whole world uh, together and uh, bringing uh, wealth and development to, uh, and prosperity, hopefully, to, to all our economies. So I certainly wish you great success with uh, today's event as it continues through the next couple of days. And thank you very much, and wish you good, uh, good luck over the next few days. Thank you. Thank you, Rosemary. Thank you yeah. very much. You. So before welcoming our next speaker, uh, I do um, Executive Vice President uh, Harvey Fun. I would like to make a, a few announcements. Uh, give me one second, please. Actually, thanks to the generosity of one of our sponsors this year, to BlackBerry, we have a few BlackBerry phones and a few USB cards uh, that we give away for free to the people attending the conference here on site. This is not for, unfortunately, for people uh, watching the conference live on, on the web. So to get these items, uh, you need to do uh, one of these two things. You can put your business card in the lucky draw box at the registration, or you can, or end, you can Weibo, uh, mentioning the hashtag ChinaCT, and uh, we'll basically uh, name the winners during the cocktail, the final cocktail, the closing cocktail, tomorrow afternoon. Again, okay. yeah. So that's the first announcement. The second announcement is that, uh, as you can see, we have a partnership with uh, Sina Weibo, and so feel free to comment on every content uh, of the Chinese conference, and uh, your comments uh, will be shown for the whole room and for over, over the internet also. Also, we give the possibility to everybody, both online audience and on-site audience, to ask questions to the speakers here. So, do not hesitate to put the hashtag ChinaCT, and uh, there will be uh, no problem to ask your questions to, to, to the audience. Uh, 